Now, what is that you're going to do with all these values is, if you remember yesterday, I said you're going to apply some kind of logic and do certain things. This is where you're not just going to create a variable with some value and store it. But using that, there will be various operations that you can do. That way, if I give you some data, you can do a lot of operations with it, right? Suppose if it is a number, I can do arithmetic operation. If it is a string, then I can do some comparison operation, right? So the same way, there are different kinds of operators which is available in a script. And especially in shell script is also the same. So now, what do you mean by an operator? An operator is nothing but you will pass two values or more than two and it will do some operation on that and return you the value. Okay. So that is what we generally call it as an operator. And any operator you are going to use, you need minimum of two values. Okay. And those two values are called as operands. Suppose if I want to add, then I need minimum of two numbers to add. Wherein to add, what will you use generally? Plus. And that plus is what we call it as operator. So that way, there are various operators available in script which we can use. Okay. So now, let us try to see one by one. So the first type of operator is arithmetic operator. So what do you mean by arithmetic operator? An uh, operator using which you can do arithmetic operation. So what are the arithmetic operations? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modular, right? All those things are called as arithmetic. So that way, now, if you have a script and if you want to do some operation or use an operator, you need to have minimum of two values. So from where are you going to get the value? From your variable, whatever you have. So that is where, for various purpose, you are going to store some values into the variable. And during runtime, whenever you want, you're going to use the operator and do certain operations. So in that, what we are going to see is the mathematic operator. OK? Now. When I'm going to use an arithmetic operator, let us see the syntax here. So whenever you are using this operator, then you need minimum of two values. So that is where you are going to use your first value, what operator you are going to use, followed by the second value. OK? Now, if I ask you to add two number, We'll say one plus another number right the same way here we are going to store the values in a variable and add or subtract or multiply two variables getting it so if i want to do something i will create two variables what kind of variable scalar variable and those scalar variable i will be passing it to the operator and do some operation so this is where the syntax is the value one, what operator you are going to use, and the value two. Now, when you are doing some operation, if you understand, first it has to operate it, take the value, and pass it down to you. Okay, or typically what we mean is just return the value. So, this is where if you want to perform any kind of arithmetic operation, only arithmetic, then what you're going to do is, you are going to basically use the backticks. Backticks is just below your escape button. So there will be some tilde. Just below that, there will be a small, not a single quote, but something similar to single quotes. Just below your escape button, you can see. So that is what we call it as backtick. Now, in Linux, anything you give within a backtick will be first evaluated and Whatever the output it is giving, that it is going to return. So that if you want, you can store it wherever you want. This way, now, for running the arithmetic expression, you are going to use the keyword called EXPR, which stands for expression. So any kind of arithmetic operation you are doing, you are going to use EXPR followed by what is the first value, 
what kind of operator you are using and what is the second value and whatever the value that it is returning or uh, this is giving you can return and store it into a variable only if you use backticks so by using backticks it is going to store the value whatever or return the value whatever the command inside it which you are running so in general you can just run backticks some os command and it will return the value of it which you can store same way now if our interest is to you know do some expression or perform a arithmetic operation then you are going to use Okay. okay so now let's take some example so this is where if i want to add a number or two number so in this script what is that first time doing i am creating a variable called variable 1 30 and variable 2 is 20 okay Now this is where if I want to add these two variables, then you know, I'm going to say expr variable one plus variable two and within quotes. So what will happen now? This will add these two, and whatever the value it is going to return, it will be stored into this add variable. So now in this example, if I say add value, what will be the adds value? Thirty plus twenty, fifty. So any expression that you are going to, you are going to use the expr okay. got it getting it any arithmetic operation you have to perform you have to use backticks and under that expr and what values you want to operate and what is the operator so plus is an operator for the arithmetic operation and these two are what operands the same way if i want to subtract numbers what will i do i have to say expr variable 1 minus variable 2 and that i am going to store it in the new variable called sub that means anything on the left hand side is the variable equal to right hand side is the value but it is not a string so that is where anything you give under backticks it is going to evaluate while evaluating you are telling it is a expression you want to run so that is how it is going to store the value of subtracting these two into a variable called sub same way now if you want to multiply two numbers you are going to use star but in linux star means some other meaning so that is where especially when you are going to multiply you are going to say slash star and what will it do now it will consider it as multiplication so like what i said negate some time back you are going to negate the star then it is considered as multiplication so now you can see expr first variable star second variable that means it is going to multiply both the numbers okay then if i want to divide two numbers then you are going to use forward slash that way expr first variable slash or forward slash divided by second variable got it now what is this sign represent this sign represents you come here modulus so what is modulus what is modulus reminder of the division reminder of the division for example if i say pi divided by 2 so modulus of pi divided by 2 is remainder is 1 1 what is remainder 2 will go 2 times which is 4 so pi minus 4 is 1 so the remainder is 1 so modulus now if you do this way that is 30 divided by 20 whatever is the remainder it will round it off and it will give it 
So remember, modulus means reminder. And now, if I use a single quote, sorry, if I use a equal to single equal to, what does this mean now? Whatever you have on the left hand side is the name of the variable, and whatever on the right hand side is the value. And in the value, what I have given? Dollar where one. So what is dollar where one? Thirty. So that is going to be stored. So this is how you are storing value of one variable into another. So this is called as assignment. You are just assigning value of one variable to another. Okay. So now let's try this. So I'm just giving this. Which mode plus X. Okay. So you can see now. We have 30 and 20. So 30 plus 20 is 50. And then 30 minus 20 is 10. Then 30 into 20, 600. And then what is this? Reminder. Oh, this is divisible. 30 divided by 20, 1 times it. And modulus is 10. 1 time it goes, and after that, remaining you have 10. Okay? And now, what is the value of variable 3? 30 because it is storing the value of variable 1. Okay. Getting it? Now, now you got if you want to add, so you can add more than two values also. If you have to add more than two values, then I will say plus and I will add another variable. Okay. So now let's take a simple example. How will I take average of three numbers so now assume i will give you three variables so that way try writing a script which will create three scalar variable and store three values define three values and try to run a command or a process by which you are going to calculate the average of it so what do you mean by average What is average? Sum, total sum divided by the total number. So that way, create three variables, scalar variables. And in that, if you do some calculation, that is what I want to see, what script you can write. So you click the script. Finally, it should display saying average of these numbers is this. So it should print be the average. So how can I do this? So first you have to define variable 3 and then you can add 3 and then you can divide it by 3. Can you try?
got this so you're just going to say create three variables and expr of 1 plus 2 plus 3 that you're going to say it as sum and then average of that is nothing but expr dollar sum divided by p so if i run this it is saying average of 1 comma 2 comma 3 is that is 1 plus 2 plus 3 how much is that 6 6 divided by 3 is so the average is okay got it how to use arithmetic operations Clear? Okay. Now, like the, the arithmetic operation, there are various other operators that we have. So, like I said, there is something called as relational operators. Relational means I can check whether one value is greater than other value or one value is lesser than other value or one value is equal to another value or not equal to. So there are a lot of things we can do. Okay. Same way, there are certain operators specific for string. So like what we used, can you use arithmetic operation on a string or can do arithmetic operations only on numeric values. Can I take two values like Adam and some other name and can I do some addition or subtraction on it? So that is the reason arithmetic operation is done only on, on numeric values. So that is, if you have a string, once again, we will do certain things like check whether it is equal to or not equal to, or if it is empty or not empty, those kind of things we can 